Okay, we're back. So, here's my, you know, faceplate pattern. And, uh, oh, you know, you could use this to make a wheel or any number of things, actually. Uh, I want to say that's probably like 8 inches, something like that. Anyway, but here's the back side. That's the part that you would uh, be chucking on. But I've actually kind of made this removable. Now, this is some of the little tricks, you know, you pick up for doing molding work, right? So that lays really nice and flat on the molding board. And you ram this all up, and then when you flip it over, you know, that's just laying flat on a bed of sand. You know, all you see is just the face. Then you can put that piece in there. You know, if that was on there beforehand, well, you'd have sand underneath here. You'd have to dig it all out. They call that uh, parting down. So you'd have to part down a whole bunch of sand, and it's not going to be a very clean edge. I mean, yeah, you could you can make it work. It's no big deal, really, but it just takes more time. But if you just make this piece removable, and that's awfully tight. It would must have swelled up humidity or something here. But anyway, that just makes it easy. And then uh, this here, I just made this as a runner. And once you got this, you know, when you go to ram this one up, I could have attached it. Take it and put that right on there, and then when it's molded up, you'll see all of that. You can put your sprue here, and I've got it marked. And then you can vent up in the highest point. Anyway, I'm probably running into a lot of theory here and everything, but uh, check out Mr. Pete's channel. He's got a, a very in-depth discussions all about pattern work and uh, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so that's the pattern for that. Um, what else we got to talk about here? Oh, um, I don't know how many people are watching me that are here in California, but uh, I guess I'm going to be doing a little bit of a project for the uh, Keith Finner's What's in Your Toolbox giveaway. Um, we're going to be making some... Uh, Oh boy, what do you call them? Machinist clamps, little machinist parallel clamps, and uh, I'm going to be doing the heat treating. And if there's anybody close to me, I know Chuck, uh, you know, outside Screwball, he's he's not too far away. I need to get a hold of him, maybe. He's probably the closest guy. Uh, but I need somebody with a surface grinder because uh, once I get the parts, I'm going to clean them up, and heat treat them, and then we want to uh, grind them. And then I'm going to try doing some uh, um, hot bluing techniques on it here. And uh, we'll see how that works out. And if it works out good, you know, you can get some really nice, beautiful like, peacock blue uh, kind of colors. And uh, that would be probably just about the right hardness by the time we're done. And, you know, it would make a really nice decorative finish. Although it's, it's very delicate. Scratch it, you can scratch it right off. But um, anyway, if anybody's close, let me know. And uh, we're trying to kind of split up the work. My mill isn't operational yet, so I really can't do any of that. Um, but I can heat heat treat this stuff, and that that really isn't that difficult. And I'll make sure to put that on film here so that everybody can see how I would do it. Anyway. See you all around. Alright, this little section here is for Bob. Uh, Bob Mullins. And I forget exactly where you're at, Bob, but I can tell by your accent you're from the south somewhere. Anyway, or considerably east of me anyway. Uh, this is that four, four jaw chuck I was telling you about. I don't know if you can see here, but them jaws are in there. They're a very snug fit. They're not stuck, I don't believe. Let me... I mean, if I ever planned anything out, I would have a chuck key on hand. I don't know where... Oh. Maybe that'll work. Huh? Does it fit in there? Nope. Sure won't. I had them out. 
out of there. I don't believe that these... It looks really ugly. It's all got some surface rust going on here. But this thing, I, I think somebody bought it thinking they were going to use it a whole bunch and they never even used it once. Uh, the faces of these jaws, are, they just look perfect to me. But the catch is, this is a, a pin style mount. I believe this is a D16. That's the wrong back plate. Um, well, there's four bolts here. You could take that off, and you could put whatever. I think uh, you got an atlas, so you could put an inch and a half eight back plate. Or, if you're brave, you check out uh, who did that? Pierre Pierre Baudry, I think is his name. French Canadian guy up there. Uh, he made a a new back plate. I think he was actually putting this style of a back plate on his lathe. Uh, he had some trouble, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but at any rate, but you could just turn one of these out of a big piece of, uh, you know, round bar, ideally, if you could find it, or plate, or something like that. Cut it out, turn it round. Uh, you, you would need a face plate or something to mount it to. Uh, but then you could just thread the internal, fit the register. There's plenty of videos, I'm sure, on uh, YouTube about all that. Um, at any rate, uh, for Bob or anybody else, this thing is, you know, bartering material. I don't need it. I've got, i can find it else over here. I've got what Bob wishes he had been able to get. This came on the, I need to clean it up. It's all brown with corrosion or whatever, but it's really, again, it looks a lot worse than it is. This was on this machine when it was sitting in the scrap bin. And everybody always wants to keep their three jaw chucks. So I'm pretty sure whoever was getting rid of this thing, whoever the guy I got it from, he took the three jaw off and put the four jaw on to throw away. Well, I don't think this thing's been used much either. This one, well, it takes an out and it Well, at any rate. I took it all apart. It was pretty crudded up. Been sitting around, getting rusty and whatnot. Um, this one's in pretty decent shape. No, I, I would, I would trade this one away to you, Bob. But I need it. <laughs> uh, if I had a spare one, uh, certainly I would, I would pass it along. But uh, this one here, I need for my machine. But this one here, which is actually, it's, a, it's an import. Uh, it says Smithy made in China. Um, it's pretty decent. You can see the body of it is considerably bigger. Oh, I've got at least another gosh, three quarters of an inch of depth on it there. It's got a lot bigger jaws on it. Uh, they're reversible. I'm rounded on this face here too, so they should be reversible. Uh, no key. Um, but at any rate, so that's uh, just some barter. All right. Well, I figured since I was was talking about patterns and stuff like that a minute ago, I'd show you this here. Um, I've got kind of far-flung plans of uh, building a Holt uh, Caterpillar tractor, an early one, and uh, at half scale. So it will be big enough to ride around on. Although if you were you know, you know, say three feet tall, I suppose that would be very handy. So this is, I don't know, I was just kind of playing around with this. But this is a core box. So there's a part at the back end that uh, supports the, it's uh, part of the final drive. It supports a great big gear, which uh, at full size is, I think, about four feet across. And uh, anyway, there's a, two big gears right there, and there's a pillar that comes up, and it's got a, you know, a Babbitt bearing. And this is, you know, think like the end of a connecting rod is kind of what it's shaped like, right? You've got a shaft that comes up, and a, oops, that's backwards. 
get a shaft that comes up and you end up having kind of a flat spot shaped just like this with Babbitt in here and then there's a cap that bolts on over the top. Well, it's kind of a funny shape because there's uh, let's see if we can come in closer. So see here, this part here is lower than this and then you need, you know, flat sides. Uh, it's just a be a very difficult part to cast with a normal just a just a loose pattern you know the way this thing here would be right you know you just set that on there molded up well it's got undercuts uh, undercuts don't work with uh, sand moldings you know uh, you can get away with that kind of stuff with uh, like lost lost wax type processes and stuff like that but anyway so because of that you end up having to build something that's really sort of complicated the way this thing is but anyway, so I got that side off, and, and you can see how that's shaped there. And I got dowels for registration. And uh, I'll take off some more. Some more screw there. there it is. Turn on the back side and pull this screw out. Just to see the way it comes apart, because all these are at 90 degrees, so you couldn't really just slide this off, right? So, got to kind of come apart in several pieces and that piece comes out to uh, you can see how it is anyway that was just kind of something I've whipped together this piece of wood is actually was infested with, with some type of boring insect <laughs> I really shouldn't have used it but uh, I wasn't sure how well it would come out nah I just used Whatever I had laying around. This is a piece of pine. This is some MDF. Yeah. Whatever you know. This is just kind of proof of concept. But it actually, actually, pretty happy with the way it came together. So uh, really, I should uh, remake this. You know, and uh, probably using all pine or something like that would be better. But uh, this machine, full-size tractor, weighs uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 26,000 pounds, which is quite a lot, right? Uh, but of course, when you miniaturize something, of course you, you know, you lose dimensions on all three axes, so it should end up being at half scale about 6,000 pounds, which is something my truck would be able to haul around, you know, so we could take it to the shows. Um, I don't know how I can put a picture in this video, but just search for Holt 75, um, you know, Holt 75 tractor, and you, you should get some pictures that come up. There's, there's field mode on the 